Hello class, this is Mr. Lehman and, and today we're going to take a look at types of chemical reactions and we're just going to look at the first two today, synthesis and decomposition reactions. In the next tutorial we'll look at single replacement and then we'll have another tutorial on double replacement and combustion. So let's take a look here. So there's five major types of chemical reactions that we'll learn about this year in chemistry. Uh, we're going to look at the first two today and so if we look at this diagram uh, we see that we have substance A plus substance B. So we have two separate substances reacting and we see that they come together in the end to bond and to form something more complex. All right, so it could be two elements or two compounds coming together to make something that's more complex. So we're going to start out with more things on the left side and end up with fewer things on the right side. Uh, reaction two that we're going to look at today, decomposition, is the opposite process of this. And so we're starting out typically with one compound and usually through electrolysis or heat uh, the bond is going to break and these two substances uh, will separate. So it could be a compound separating into two elements or it could be a compound separating into a compound and an element or two compounds. So we'll look at some different options. So some more specifics. So synthesis reaction, sorry wrong button. Synthesis reaction also called a combination reaction because two things that were separate starting out, two things that are physically in the same space are going to come together and combine chemically. So you say A plus B makes AB or A plus B makes C. So we're going to make a compound here that we didn't have before. And so in your notes we had some things, we called this the hookup reaction. So if you had a dance, uh, two individuals, two people, all by themselves, uh, can get together, dance, as they dance they form uh, a more complex substance, a compound. All right, so the individuals represent different atoms of different elements coming together to make a couple, a pair, or a compound. Uh, clues, how do you know that you're going to have a synthesis reaction? Uh, ionic compounds are going to be in their natural solid phase. All right, so any salts that we have will be solid, they won't be dissolved. Uh, pure elements are going to take the form that they have at room temperature. Uh, so whether or not they're solids, liquids, or gases, look at the periodic table in our room. Uh, both reactants are elements, both things that we're starting out with are elements, and the only thing they can do is combine together. And uh, typically we're not going to have aqueous substances here. Uh, so if you see something dissolved in water, typically that's going to be a, an exchange or replacement reaction, not a synthesis or decomposition reaction. Uh, so if we look at some examples here, if we have two elements on the left side, the only thing they can do is combine. So they're going to form a binary compound, an element made of two elements, or a compound made of two elements. And so magnesium wants to become plus two, chlorine wants to become minus one, and so we get magnesium chloride forming. This is a simple one to one to one ratio. Uh, calcium and oxygen gas, calcium metal, they're going to link up. Calcium's plus two, oxygen's minus two. So calcium oxide, one-to-one -one ratio, so we have to balance this. And I'm not going to balance every single one, but I do want to balance a few to show you that we do have to have the correct ratios to show that matter is conserved. Uh, metal oxide, so a metal that's attached to oxygen, or an oxide ion, something that has a minus two charge, uh, plus water, the water is going to combine, and so if we're adding in two hydrogens and another oxygen to the oxygen that's already there, we get the metal hydroxide. So what I mean by that? Well, hydroxide is OH minus 1. So calcium is plus 2. So I would need two of these hydroxide ions to make calcium hydroxide so that this is neutral. Potassium, potassium plus water, potassium oxide plus water. Once again, we get a metal hydroxide. Potassium is plus 1. Hydroxide is minus 1. So a 1 to 1 ratio between these ions. If we want to take a look and balance this, there's two cases here. I need to have two of this, and then uh, everything's balanced. Now, decomposition, opposite process of synthesis, things splitting apart. If we're heating something up, the heat can provide the activation energy to break that bond. Uh, you'll see a triangle over top of the arrow. If we are passing electricity from a battery or another voltage source, through an aqueous solution, you'll see ELEC above the arrow. All right, so things splitting apart. Some notes, pretty similar to before, except that because it's a reverse process, almost always we're going to start out with one reactant. Uh, sometimes you can have like two reactants and have a more complex reaction, but 
for the most part in this class you'll see one thing on the left side that's going to split apart. Uh, once again, things are going to be taking their natural phases, natural states. Uh, we're typically not going to have aqueous substances and you often see heat or electricity needed for this decomposition to, to provide the energy to break that bond. So if you look at some examples of decomposition reactions, if you have a binary compound, uh, the only thing that this can do when heated is to separate. Uh, so if it separates, we get magnesium metal and we get oxygen gas. Remember, oxygen is diatomic. And if we're making a gas, we write an up arrow. So if we're producing a gas, instead of writing G, we show an up arrow. Uh, so this isn't balanced, we could balance that. I'm not going to do that for now. Uh, if you look at potassium chloride, it'll separate into potassium metal. And then chlorine gas. Uh, once again, chlorine is another diatomic element. So if we want to balance that up, we need two of that, two of that. If we look at strontium hydroxide, metal hydroxides, which are bases, will split apart into the metal oxide plus water. So strontium hydroxide. Strontium is a metal, it's plus 2, oxygen oxide minus 2, so 1 to 1 ratio, and then H2O. And so look here, do I have the same number of everything? Yes, so it's balanced. Uh, sodium hydroxide, sodium hydroxide, we have a metal oxide, sodium is going to be plus 1 ion, oxide is minus 2, so we need two sodiums for the one oxide ion, and then we'll get water. And then this isn't balanced, so you'd have to balance it up. All right, a metal carbonate. So a metal that's linked up with the carbonate ion, which is a minus 2 ion, is going to split apart once again into the metal oxide and give off CO2 gas. So BaO, Ba is plus 2, O is minus 2, carbon dioxide gas, CO2. And because it's a product, we draw an up arrow. This is a salt. Salts form crystal lattices, so they are solids at room temperature. Just like we saw before, two sodiums for the oxygen to make that neutral. It's a salt. It's going to be solid at room temperature. And then we get CO2 gas produced. All right. Metal chlorates. Metal chlorates, and remember, chlorate has a minus one charge, will separate. Chlorine will stay with the metal. Oxygen will split off to form oxygen gas. So we have KCl plus 1 minus 1. And that's a salt. So it's a solid, a crystal lattice at room temperature. And oxygen diatomic. Uh, this isn't balanced, so we would need 2, 2, 3 to balance that. Magnesium plus 2. Chlorate minus 1. So magnesium needs to bond with two chlor chlorines, chlorides, to become neutral. It's a salt, so it's a solid at room temperature. And then the oxygen, once again, will form pairs. And uh, moving on here, number five, metal, carb metal bicarbonates. Metal bicarbonates. So bicarbonate has a hydrogen, so that hydrogen uh, changes the charge of the carbonate. Carbonate's normally minus two. Bicarbonate is a minus one ion. And so that's why we need two bicarbonates to link up with the calcium. So calcium metal carbonate. So calcium the metal links up with the carbonate. And that's a one to one ratio, plus two minus two. We get CO2 gas produced. And we get water. Uh, now this is tricky. Water, depending on how much heat is there, that water is probably going to be a gas if we have to heat this up. Uh, instead of being a liquid, this is going to be at a heated, uh, heated uh, above room temperature, and so we probably will have water vapor coming off, not liquid water, and that is not balanced. You'd have to balance that up, and uh, actually it is balanced. I'm sorry, so it is balanced. If we look at sodium, sodium is going to stay linked up with the carbonate. Sodium is plus one, carbonate is minus two. We'll make CO2 gas. And we'll make water, and probably once again it's going to be water vapor, not liquid water because of the heat that we need to use to break that bond. And then finally, hydrated ionic compound, a hydrate, so something like calcium chloride, dihydrate. If water's trapped within that crystal lattice, if we heat it up, 
uh, the calcium fluoride is going to stay together and the water will come off. Uh, so the water will evaporate like we saw in class with the test tube. Alright, and that is it. So hopefully this helps. Uh, on to tutorial number two. Thanks for watching.